Hello and welcome to Tales and Trails, I'm Minnie Menon. Art has always been used as a potent tool to make a point. It not only reflects the imagination of the artist, it oftentimes also conveys strong political and social messages that can inspire action. Long before the advent of the internet or television sets or radio uh, channels, there was a time when art played a role of communication. We're talking about early 20th century India, the rise of the freedom movement and the network of small commercial hubs across Rajasthan where a new form of art evolved. This is among the earliest known video clips of the Mahatma in London. By the time the Mahatma went there for the round table conference, he was a hero among working class locals who welcomed him. Back here, deep within India, where such videos had not reached as yet, the printing press and innovative artists developed a novel way of updating people on what was happening in India's fight for independence. This was art that was popular on calendars, local advertisements, in shops, and it had a purpose. Art historian and curator Aditya Ruya has spent years studying the evolution of the 19th century Nadwara art emanating from the temple town in Rajasthan. Interested in how a new form of collage art evolved and took a contemporary turn influencing public opinion, Aditya put together an exhibition on some of the collage art accumulated by collectors from old Shikhavati Havelis in Rajasthan. These tell the story of India's struggle for freedom, starting with the very idea of India as a nation. Well, you know, the, really the journey starts with how in the country is portrayed. To begin with, India wasn't a concept. Uh, see, India is, is really a very recent uh, concept. concept huh? Hindustan or Al-Hind or uh, Bharatvarsh is what the real uh, concept was. And the earliest uh, boundaries are really demarcated by, uh, by Shankaracharya when he, uh, when he creates the four mutts. Mm. They really constitute in an odd sort of a way. It's a spiritual geography. It's a yeah. spiritual geography. So we don't really have a political geography. Our political geography is constantly changing. Mm. So what our political leaders did was actually capitalize on the idea of Bharatvarsh. And the, and the idea of uh, being uh, an ancient uh, culture. That's how we, in the earliest uh, uh, conceptions, you see the uh, images of gods and goddesses, mm. Hindu uh, or rather Indic literature being portrayed. And that is how, you know, the concept... That was of, universal, right? That I mean, was universal within okay. the thing. And then in 19, uh, 1905, when mm -hmm. Bengal was partitioned, that's the time when Abhinendra Nath Tagore actually uh, brought about an icon of Banga Mata. The, she was modelled on our ancient goddesses. And that is how you got the first concept of a lady being uh, being a goddess, being uh, from Banga Mata, she became Bharat Mata. Durga Puja is a very common thing out there in uh, Bengal. So, representing India or, or Bengal as a feminine deity became very easy for for Abhinendra Tagore, and that is where the whole concept began of representing India as uh, Bharat Mata. There were many characters that made it all happen, right? You had Ravi Varma and his printing press and his very prolific representation of a more modern looking, uh, you know, a deity or a Devi. Then you had this kind of proliferation of grassroots level art that kind of came in. So, uh, you know, if you were to look at the three, four stages in the evolution of this piece of, of art, uh, how, what would you look at? I mean, how would you place it together? Calendars actually have been the greatest uh, carriers of political message in, in the country, whether it be via the prints of Ravi Varma or they be via other prints that we see out here. Oh. So, and th these were sent out via the medium of calendars. 
The collages that Aditya painstakingly collected for a recent exhibition at Mumbai's gallery, Chatterjee and Lal, are a confluence of many forms. At the heart were the influences from Nardwara, the famous temple town in Rajasthan that has created its own genre of art with the famous pichwais or backdrops. In these collages, pristine sceneries from Nardwara form the backdrop for a more contemporary political imagery, often using cutouts from newspapers. These were purchased by wandering traders who took them back to their homes to be hung there. Going far beyond art, these collages often captured the twists and turns in India's freedom struggle and the crossroads. Take for example this collage that talked of the ideological split in the Congress after the Tripuri Congress in 1939 when Subhash Chandra Bose took over as the Congress president. What the artist has done is he's brought the victors in the foreground, which is, is, a, is a tradition in miniature painting. The, the person who's, who loses, that is uh, Patavi uh, Sita Ramaya, is a, has been relegated to the back. Mm. While Bose is standing in the center, he's at crossroads. Mm. And there are two row of paths that have been shown, mm. where he, he can either take the path that Gandhi is, uh, is advocating or he can take the hardline path. Hmm. And this is how the, the artist has been able to bring out this moment. Also what the artist has done is that he's, he's shown two different flags. Uh, one in the ha hand of Bose and the, uh, another one, Krishna hand, handing over another one to uh, Gandhi and uh, Nehru. That's, that's kind of sim symbolic also, right? The nation, the nation is actually represented by the flag. Hmm. So he, the artist is very, very uh, succinctly or rather very, uh, uh, in a very sort of subtle manner, showing two, two ideologies through two different flags. And they're almost similar, the, the two flags, but they vary. The way the colors have been placed vary. That shows a, a difference in the ideology. The other uh, very telling uh, piece is the dilemma that uh, the Mahatma is in during the period of partition, 46, 47 period. There are a lot of images of him in a pensive mood, of, of uh, you know, Krishna uh, at his side, etc. Uh, take us through what you felt when you were looking at these. Partition really actually happens when the Muslim League wins uh, a majority, say in 1946. Mm. Before that, there is really no talk of partition. And it, it's at that point that Jinnah really uh, asks for partition. Gandhi is totally against it. And he says, you can't tear my mother into two. Mm. And uh, it's, it's surprising that, you know, sort of the artists, the contemporary artists at that point in time, is able to capture that so well. And at the same time, bec uh, he, because Gandhi is constantly talking of Gita being his mother, he shows uh, Krishna uh, advising Gandhi at a moment when he is completely uh, in a quandary yeah. and in, uh, in a, you know, sort of what to do and how to proceed. That's very beautifully the same. And he also portrays, you know, the rising sun. So, I mean, Independence is, uh, is imminent, mm. but uh, he shows the darkness of the dilemma uh, through the clouds, the dark clouds that are around in the background. So I'm going to talk about the Vaitarna River and this particular dialogue that's happening. This is also 1950, I think. It was just, you know, when the nation has just born, there's a lot of trauma of partition happening, Gandhi's death. This is 1950 and again the imagery Suddenly, Subhash Chandra Bose is also on that side of the Vaitarna. You know, so what do you see when you see something like that? Mini, what happens is that uh, 1947 to about 1952 is a period of great uh, traumatic experiences, and a lot is happening in the country. I mean, we we can't uh, imagine what is really happening. It's a new, it's a new young nation. There isn't enough money. There is, uh, there is a, a pressing need to, for self-sufficiency. You know, I mean, the, if you read the the uh, autobiography of uh, of uh, Nehru at that uh, and his letters and things like that at that point in time, you can see how pressed he is 
for to bring the nation to a certain point mm. now what happens is that Ga gandhi ji dies in 1948 he shot and uh, subhash chandra bose also has dies in 1945 so what the artist has done in this particular uh, thing is he's uh, he has demarcated two islands one uh, with a river in the center uh, which is Vaitarni, the river, uh, the, the celestial river that separates uh, living beings from the dead. Mm. Gandhi and, and uh, Bose are shown as martyrs on, on one side of the, uh, you know, of the river and Nehru who is the, who is the living and, uh, person with the, with the responsibility of the country is shown on the other side. It's a very, very, very uh, potent uh, uh, sort of rendering of current affairs. Mm. And Nehru carrying papers in his hands, he's probably moving towards the constitution. Mm. And or the five-year plan, whichever way you look at it. Whichever way you look at it. <laughs> yeah. But it's, uh, you know, sort of, uh, there is the constitution 1952, there is the uh, five-year plans which start almost in the in the early 50s. So both these things are, are happening simultaneously. Nehru is traveling all over the world to bring in support and aid into India. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that are happening on, and there's so much on his plate at that point in time. Then you have the gradual de deification of Gandhi, right? The Mahatma becomes larger than life. Suddenly from a figure within the painting, he starts dominating the painting. You know, and then he's, you know, shown as one of the prophets, he's shown as God himself, he's shown with Bharat Mata. Uh, take us through the, 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 the collages in, in, in that category. He becomes a, a, a demigod, he becomes a prophet, and that's why he's called a Mahatma. Hmm. See, behind me is a collage where he actually uh, leaves the governing to Nehru and walks away with, yeah. with, uh, with his, the two girls he calls his walking sticks. So that's there, there's a Bharat Mata handing over the flag, flag to Nehru. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's very telling of you know a person who can be, who can give up, who can who can let go of uh, of power of authority at the right moments. But that brings me to the next logical question: What do you think was going through the mind of the person who put it together? Would these have been commissioned? planned? Would these have come from the artist's imagination? I mean, these are questions that obviously come. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great political commentary. It's a very astute political co commentary on the times and uh, uh, very important times that too. So how do you think it would have been put together? So in the absence of any signatures, uh, one, uh, one can only say that the artists were very uh, clued into the current events. Uh, that they were uh, put together or commissioned is very difficult to say because the sources are very different, the styles are, are have an, uh, there, but there is a difference in the styles. There is an umbrella uh, kind of st uh, stylistic affiliation, but styles are very different. I mean, there are, there are uh, idyllics which are pastoral, there are idyllics which are uh, urban. Even th there is a difference between the, uh, the, uh, the way the urban is expressed, the pastoral is... So there, it's definitely in the hands of... Uh, by the hands of different artists. Mm. Now, someone with a very thinking mind is putting them together. Mm. He's not signing them. Mm. Now, why is he not signing them? Is it because of censorship? Is it because he doesn't know enough about what is going to happen to them eventually. One can say that these are broadsides which actually uh, carry the political message at that point in time. Mm. But one can't be sure of who the artists were or who the, uh, the, who the patrons of these. And which is the last one, which is symbolic of, of this chapter? Uh, I would say the, uh, symbolic, of the, uh, symbolic of this chapter closing is Gandhi becoming a martyr. Yeah. And uh, on the other hand, he becomes uh, father of the nation and he becomes synonymous to India. So, you know, Gandhi and India become synonymous.
This collection of collages may not fit the classical description of great art, but they are, though not in the traditional sense. They are a movement captured in frames, reflecting what was happening and also influencing how people participated in the birth of our nation. You can see the whole story of India's independence struggle in one collection. Thanks so much for joining us on Tales and Trails and do remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Goodbye.